Do you want to score very high in your 2024 jam physics exam? This video that have covered essential topics with practice questions and answers is for you. Welcome to our ultimate jam physics cram section. We just few days left until the big exam. We have got your back. I am Joy No Physics. I'm here to guide you through the most crucial topics you need to know for the 2024 Jam Physics Center. Okay, this first one is from Jam 2010, question number 41. A galvanometer with full scale deflection of 10 milliameter is to be converted to a voltmeter with full scale deflection of 5 volts if a series resistance of 4 198 ohms is used for the conversion the resistance of the galvanometer is so in this case we are looking at conversion of galvanometer to voltmeter there is something i want you to note a galvanometer can be converted to an ammeter and a galvanometer can be converted to a voltmeter let me use illustration I want you to note this very important point. A galvanometer can be converted to an ammeter using a low resistance shunt connected in parallel. Please. A low resistance shunt connected in parallel. To convert a galvanometer to an ammeter, a low resistance shunt is connected in parallel. Low resistance LR shunt, don't forget it. A low resistance shunt is connected in parallel. To convert a galvanometer to voltmeter, a high resistance multiplier is connected in series. Please don't forget this. To convert a galvanometer to voltmeter, a high resistance multiplier is connected in series. Now let's look at the formula. The formula for the shunt resistance and the sh shunt, the shunt resistance and the multiplier resistance. Then we'll use the formula to solve the calculation. That's the question. This is the formula we are going to use to convert galvanometer to voltmeter. The resistance for the multiplier will be voltage all over current IG, that's current passing through the galvanometer, minus resistance through the galvanometer, that's R subscript G. So we are going to use this formula to solve that question. But let me write the formula for the shunt resistance. That's when you are converting, that's when you are converting when you are converting galvanometer to an ammeter using a low resistance shunt the formula will be okay this is the formula for galvanometer to ammeter where ig is the current through the galvanometer rg is the current through the galvanometer i is the total current then ig is the current through the galvanometer now let's pick out from the questions all the parameters we are giving from the question we're giving the current through the galvanometer as 10 milliamperes the voltage as 5 volts the resistance as 498 ohms then we are looking for the resistance through the galvanometer so let's apply our formula we are using the the formula that are is equal to v over ig minus rg so let's make rg the subject of the formula so the one we are looking for will be v over ig then this one will move to this part that's minus r we can go ahead and substitute that rg is equal to 5 over 10 remember is milli ampere so it's raised to power minus 3 
then minus 498 498 so if we put everything there so we we'll have everything to be 500 minus 498 and that will give us 2 ohms so this is the answer to the question so option 2 option A 2 ohms is the correct option the next question is from JAM 2013. To convert a galvanometer to voltmeter, a dash. You see, remember I said a galvanometer can be converted to an ammeter using a low resistance short. And a galvanometer can be convert and a galvanometer can be converted to a voltmeter using a high resistance multiplier. So this one, in this question, we are converting galvanometer to voltmeter. We'll be using high resistance multiplier connected in series. So we'll look for the option that has high resistance. Okay, look at the first one, which is the correct option is option A. High resistance is connected in it in series. Option A is the correct option. High resistance is connected in series. That's a multiplier is connected in series. Now, if you look at 44, induced EMF are best explained using Lenz law. Lenz law. Remember that under electromagnetism, we have Faraday's law and Lenz law. Okay, the next one is under transformers that's jam 2014 question 42 you have seen most of the questions we are doing under this topic is around 40 something 40 something done okay now please if you have not subscribed to this channel please hit the subscribe button like this video give this video a thumbs up as you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel good luck good luck good luck in your exams you're going to do well you're going to smile out of the example please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more content i'm assuring you that if you follow through all my teachings to the end you're going to score very very high because i've done my research and i'm bringing out things i know that will help you please follow this channel subscribe to this channel like this video give it a thumbs up thank you okay let's continue use the diagram below to answer question 42 and 43 now look at the diagram this is the input this is the input so the input the input is the primary why the output is the secondary they are asking us the diagram above is that is that type of is it a step up transformer is it a step down transformer you know we have step up transformer and step down transformer it is a step up transformer because check the number of tons of coils in the primary section is very few and now check the number of tons of coils in this part which is the secondary it is small to determine if it's a primary or secondary transformer depends on the number of tons of coil now the number of tons of coil here is less primary is more secondary so it's moving up increasing now if you check the next question that is this 43 the electromotive force in the secondary winding is increasing that's the correct option this one is a step up transformer and the electromotive force is increasing so pick this option and pick this option okay let's continue let's continue please i want you to note this number of tons of coil in secondary over number of tons of coil in primary is equal to the voltage in secondary all over the voltage in primary please use this and remember it primary is the input someone that is just coming into primary one is just a coming in then secondary you are leaving output secondary is the output you are leaving you are graduating to next level to the university primary is just starting life it's just coming in so primary is the input secondary is the output use this and remember it jam 
2011, question number 36. The correct expression for the potential at a point distance R for a charge Q in an electric field is this the first option which is wrong? The second option is correct. Okay, let me use illustration to point out some things. From Coulomb's law, F is equal to Q1, Q2 all over 4 pi permittivity R squared. And remember that F is equal to QE. So, if F is equal to QE, if we are looking for the electric field intensity E, it will be F over Q which will reduce finally as from that first one, one Q will leave so that we we'll have four pi permittivity R square. This is for the electric field intensity. The electric potential V will be Q all over four pi permittivity R. Let this picture be painted in your mind. If it's F, it will be Q1, Q2 all over 4 pi permittivity R square. If it's electric field intensity E, 1Q will leave. If it's electric potential V, you have 1Q and 1R. Please note this relationship, very important. Okay, the next question is from JAM 2013. Now, question number 36, that's this one. Calculate the force acting on an elect electron of charge 1.5 times 10 raised to power minus 19 coulombs placed in an electric field of intensity 10 raised to power 5 volts per meter. Okay, we are looking for the force F. From the question we are giving, let's write out all the parameters we are giving. The charge is given as 1.5 times 10 raised to power minus 19 coulombs. The electric field intensity is given as 10 raised to the power 5 and we are looking for the force. So, we are going to use the formula F is equal to Q, QE. So, we are going to multiply that to get the final answer. So, if we multiply that, we are going to have it to be 1.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 13 Newtons, that's the correct answer.